Flow fam, we thank you for tuning in to Flowing Life, where we love God, love people, and live life. Let's get there. Let's get there. Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I'm going to start reading. Some of you are still turning because we got to go. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. This is what it says. <clears throat> so it was, as the multitude pressed about him, talking about Jesus, to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret <clears throat> and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, <clears throat> which was Simon's, and asked him, put out a little from land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out. Somebody say launch out. Launch out. Somebody say launch out. If y'all hear me scream, launch out, y'all better scream, launch out, too. Somebody say, launch out. Launch out. Woo! You got to speak your spirit today. Into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Mm. But Simon answered and said, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, somebody say, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. Let me skip down to verse 10. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. You will be a fisher of men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. If I could use for a message title this morning <clears throat> anything, I would use launch out. You already said it. Somebody say, launch out. Launch out. Launch out. Launch out. Father, I thank you for this word. Speak to your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Um, launch out. Listen, um, this is a familiar passage, but one thing that I have discovered about my walk with Christ and the more that I grow and mature in the things of Christ is that you can go back to the same passage of scripture that you read last year, last month, last week. But now that you have grown and matured, you can go back and read that same passage, but read it from now a new place. Right? You can go back and read the same passage, and maybe it was things that you did not understand on the level that you were on. But now that you're on a new level, you can get new revelation, right? So don't think you know where we're going because I believe that even you this morning, you're going to hear something in this passage that you've never heard because you're hearing from a new level. Um, this morning, my, my objective is to help you, assist you, challenge you, encourage you, beseech you, beg you even, plead with you. Somebody say, launch out. Launch out. To launch out. Um, Jesus tells him, launch out into the deep. Um, the deep is a place where you discover who you were meant to be all along. The deep, he says, launch out into the deep. Um, what's Peter's occupation? He's a fisherman. He's a professional this is what he does. He's a fish whisperer. He knows how to do this blindly with his eyes closed. He doesn't need help. He doesn't need assistance. But sometimes I believe he probably just takes a couple guys out there with him just to enjoy the time, just to kick back and chill and to do nothing. Right. This is his profession. Peter has no idea that Jesus is about to use his profession to introduce him to purpose. Peter has no idea how his purpose is wrapped up in, tied up in, tangled up in the profession that he's been doing his entire life. Peter just thinks, oh, this is just something I'm doing for money. This is just something I get paid for doing. 
This is just something I do on the side. This is just something I was trained in. My dad taught me how to do this, and this is something I've been doing my whole life. This is something I can do without practice. I don't, I don't need anybody to tell me how to do it. I know how to do this. Doesn't even understand that God is about to use his profession to reveal to him his purpose. Um, in 2016, 2016, um, my wife and I were living um, in Virginia. We were in Richmond, Virginia. Um, and God had put it on our hearts um, to make a move. But at the same time, we didn't know where we were going. We didn't know what we would be doing once we got there. I know y'all see us now, and you're like, man, you know, man, hand of God, hand of God must have been on y'all, and you, you know, God gave y'all a clear vision, clear perspective. Y'all knew exactly, you know, the, the end from the beginning. We did not. All we knew was that we felt this tug and we felt this pull, and we didn't have any context for it because we didn't, we've never felt this before. So we don't know what to do with this new information. We know that we feel this tug. And we know that we have a calling on our, our lives, but we still don't know what it looks like. And so we go to our pastors and we say, hey, we feel this tug, we feel this pull, we don't know what to do with this. And the leaders that we have are not leaders that, 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 would, uh, that would just try to pull you in close because they're afraid to lose you, but they want to see us operate in purpose too. And if you know anything about your pastors, we want to see you function in your purpose as well. And so what they said to us was, okay, well, if you believe that God is tugging you, we want you to take a trip to the place where you believe that God is calling you to. And we want you to go around the city and pray around the city and see what he says. Because if you claim you hear from God, he's going to have to speak to you. I know it's a whole lot of answers that you want to get from Pastor Ty. Pastor Ty, if you just give me a prophetic word. Pastor Ty, if you just tell me what to do. Pastor Ty, I know you always got the word on your, on your lips. I know if you just pray for me. But there are moments where you need to go to God for yourself. There are moments where you need to hear the word from God himself, Holy Spirit, or he needs to speak to you in your private time, even through the word of God. Because when you're faced with those challenging times, when you're, when you're in a situation where it don't look like what you think it's supposed to look like, you're going to have to fall back on not the word of Pastor Ty, not the word of your mentor, not the word of your prayer warrior, but you're going to have to fall back on the word of God because that'll be the only thing to sustain you. He said, go down there and pray about it and see what he says. We make a trip down to Charlotte. <clears throat> we come down to Charlotte in 2016. We make a trip. Um, and so this wasn't a vacation. We didn't come down here just thinking like, oh, this is a nice city. We like how all of the buildings have uh, lights that are in sync and they push a button. They change the colors every night. Um, they have professional teams and, and nightlife is popping. Like we didn't come down here looking just for a good time. We came down here with the intent of looking for purpose, looking for calling. So we stayed in a, uh, stayed in a hotel um, right in the heart of the city in Uptown, right on College Street, I believe it was. Um, and we stayed in the hotel, so that morning I didn't sleep in, because I'm like, this ain't no vacation. I ain't come here to chill. I came here on purpose. I woke up early that morning. My wife is in the bed, getting her beauty sleep. I wake up in the morning, I open up the blinds so I can see the skyline in the city. I crack open my Bible, and it falls on Luke chapter 5. Um, the interesting thing about this is I'm not one of them people that opens up my Bible, just whatever it fall on today, that's what I'm going to read. Maybe you might start there when you first get introduced to your relationship with God, but at some point, you got to grow. You got to be intentional about your reading. What do I need to read today that's going to give me my charge? Before I got ready to read, before I got ready to pray, I heard Holy Spirit say, Luke chapter 5. Um, I know as much as y'all think I know the Bible and I know exactly where every scripture is in the Bible, guess what? I don't. So when he said Luke chapter 5, I'm thinking like, oh, this must be good. I don't, I, don't, I don't even know what I'm about to read. This might hurt. This might feel good. This might be consolation. I might be getting in trouble. I don't know what I'm about to read, but I recognize the voice of God, so let me turn to it. I turned to Luke chapter 5, and there was two words in this passage that jumped off of the page. Actually, a few words. Y'all can probably already guess what the two words were. There's, there's two parts that jumped out at me in this part. It said in verse, uh, verse 3, it said, Then he got into the, uh, one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to, watch out, it says, push out a little. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. He says, push out a little. Right? 
Um, sometimes we're intimidated by the big launch out. We don't want to hear God say launch out because that's too big. That's too intimidating. God, it, I don't know if y'all can handle this, but I'm going to say it. Um, had God showed us that we were going to come down here and start a church right from the jump, I, don't, I, I think I probably till this day will be scared to even travel to Charlotte. Because I wouldn't want to come through the city because I would probably feel like, man, if I pass through the city, God probably going to start speaking to me. I don't want to go down that way because I already know what I'm supposed to do. Had he shown us the big picture, it might have been intimidating. The pastor says, push out a little. What if he would have jumped in the boat and the first thing he would have said to Peter was, launch out into the deep. Peter would have been like, first of all, you ain't even asked for permission to get in my boat. Go back and read it. He ain't asked. He said he told two boats. He hopped in and started preaching. You ain't even asked for permission. Wait a minute, God, what you doing? Like, how, how do you expect so much from me? And I'm not even giving you the green light to work in my life yet. He says, push out a little. This was symbolic of us just simply saying, God, I'm willing. God, I'm open. I'm still working on my complete yes, but I am open. I am willing. If you tell me to go, I might not break out into a full sprint, but at least I'll walk up to the starting line and I'll take the first step. Right. So Peter, he, he gets in the boat and he says, push out a little, just a little bit. I'm not giving you the big picture. I'm not giving you everything right up front because you can't handle it. If I was to dump your full purpose on you today, you would probably run out the doors of the church screaming and hollering and yelling, Pastor Ty, I don't know if I can do this. I ain't cut out for this. I ain't fit for this. And so Jesus has to slow walk Peter into his purpose. He has to watch this. He has to allow Peter to participate in the revelation. Oh, yeah, it's good. Oh, yeah, it's good. He has to allow Peter to participate in the revelation. So when God, uh, <clears throat> when God nudged us to come down to Charlotte, it was our participation. We were willing. We were open. Okay, let me, let's, let, let, let's, God, let's, let's, let's see what this is about. Um, and then the more we prayed, the more he confirmed it. The more he confirmed it. Um, a few months later, we took a second trip, and he confirmed it. Everywhere we went, he confirmed it. We took a third trip, he confirmed it. Every single place we went, until we got to the point where once we went back to our pastors and said, hey, um, this is what we believe that God is showing us. That once he gave us the green light to launch out, it wasn't intimidating. At that point, we were confident and we said, all right, let's do it. We're ready to go. Because he had gotten us to a place where we could be confident in the launch. This morning, I'm not giving you these two words to say, launch out, launch out, launch out into a place um, that you've not been prepared for, but you're going into a place that he has been slowly revealing. Some of the stuff that God has been showing to you, it's not that he hasn't revealed it. I don't know that, that you've uh, completely gotten to a place where you're ready to receive it. I don't know if y'all hear what I'm saying this morning. I, 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 I absolutely believe you do. Um, <clears throat> I know that God has been revealing himself to all of you under the sound of my voice. I know that he has been showing you maybe even spurts of purpose, giftings, abilities that he's put on the inside of you. But some of us are more like Peter than we'll probably admit. Because when the word comes to Peter and he says, launch out into the deep, cast out your nets. What's Peter's response? Go ahead. You can look. You can look. You can look at your Bibles. What's Peter's response when he tells him to launch out? Wait a minute. You want me to do what? Um, <clears throat> have you ever found yourself in a situation where you believe that God has given you an instruction? You won't admit this, but. Maybe you've just kind of said it in your mind. He's giving you an instruction, but you say, um, God, I've been doing this for years, and I already know that ain't going to work. You want me to do what? Um, God, but that, that math ain't mathing. 
something ain't adding up. So you want me to go put in an application that I already put in three times? That don't really, that don't really make sense. So you want me to go back to the place that already told me no? Don't you know they're going to look at me like I'm crazy? So, 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 so you want me to go back a tenth time and try to work on this project that keeps on failing every single time? So you want me to go back to the table and, and, and write a book that I've been working on for years, but every single time it gets shut down, something doesn't work, I lose my finances or funding for it, or, 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 or it collapses, I get, I get set back. I tell you this, man, I was working on a, um, a, a music project some years back, and this was my very first project. And so I don't know what to expect. Um, I'm a little ignorant of the process. I'm just really excited about everything. I don't know all of the hard work that really, really goes into it. This is my very first one. I get almost all the way through all of the recordings, not just writing the music, but recording everything, and all of the songs are almost completely done. I got maybe one song maybe to do a couple little tweaks to, and the album is almost finished. Producer calls me, and he says, man, um, <clears throat> My hard drive crashed. <laughs> Don't play with me. Because if you're not joking, then we got some serious problems right now. Man, I wish I was joking. <clears throat> My hard drive crashed. Can you imagine the feeling of pouring your heart and soul into something? And then having that thing violently ripped away, I feel like my heart just hit the floor. And somebody came and stepped on it and spit on it, put it into a grinder, and offered it to dogs. <laughs> That's how it felt. I went through a phase, I went through a season where I did not want to touch music, didn't want to write music, didn't want to sing music, because I felt like, why should I waste my time pouring myself into something that might not even manifest at the end of the day? Why should I even give myself to something that's not even promised, that's not even a done deal? Why should I give myself to something that I don't even know? It's not even 100% if this thing is going to work. I don't know about y'all, but I'll be looking at analytics. Um, uh, I'll be looking at numbers, I'll be looking at statistics, um, and, uh, and, and, and a lot of the decisions that are made are calculated decisions. Can you imagine Peter being a professional? So when he gives him this instruction to go cast out his net, you can imagine that he's thinking about the analytics. He's thinking about the algorithms. Um, he's, he, he, he's thinking about uh, the statistics of um, when are fish normally out? How do they respond? What time of day is it? Um, is the water troubled? Is the wind blowing? What, what angle is the sun uh, beaming down at? Is it cloudy? He, he's factoring in all of this stuff with his response to God. It's not, it's, it's not just a knee jerk, oh God, I don't know about that. It's a very calculated response. Like many of ours, God, I mean, I would do it, but, God, I really want to, but, and you can have a very valid reason for why that but is there. I learned a long time ago to get my butt out the way, because when God makes up his mind that he is trying to do something, then the only thing that can stop it from happening is and sometimes God will bring you to a place where he's like, you know what? I don't even care about your little feelings. I don't care about your emotions. I don't care what you're going through. I have a purpose that I created you for. And guess what's going to hurt worse than me pushing you out and launching out into the deep against your will? Guess what's going to hurt even worse than that? You sitting in comfort for the rest of your life. That hurts even more. On the outside, looking in at everybody else doing what they're called to and wondering, God, when are you going to do something with me? Maybe when you give me permission. Maybe when you allow me to do the thing that I've been trying to do in your life the entire time. He tells Peter to launch out into the deep. Essentially telling him and what I'm sharing with you this morning, don't be content with your profession. You need to move in purpose. We're not just content with operating in our occupation. I need you to start seeking out your vocation. 
right? I'm, I am not just content with, with being with, on, a, on a career, in a career. But God, what is your calling for my life? What are you calling me to do? Because guess what? If you're not operating in purpose, if you're not walking out your calling, then you will continue to be unfulfilled for the rest of your life until you begin to walk out your calling. Anybody know what I'm talking about this morning? You will continue to be unfulfilled. I don't care what you try to put your hands on. I don't, it doesn't even matter if you're producing in the area that you're working in. It don't matter how much, success is not how much money you make. Success is not how much you've accomplished. Success is not the size of your house or the size of your business or how many employees you have or how many kids you have or your marital stat status. Su success does not have to do with all of those things. You know what success is? I receive it. You know what success is? Success is, are you operating in your purpose? Am I doing what God created me for? Because even an iron can make a grilled cheese sandwich. Only people who had to throw together some meals that ain't have all the, uh, all the, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. You, 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 can, you can figure out some things when you don't got everything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It'll pull some creativity out of you. I mean, there's a lot of things that serve multiple purposes, but that doesn't mean that that's what it was created for. There's a whole lot of ways to heat up water without a water heater. I'm sure y'all been there before. There's a lot of ways to heat up your home, even if your heater is not working. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Why y'all acting funny this morning? There, there, there's a whole lot of things that you can use. Um, I ain't going to get into that. <laughs> there, there's a lot of things that might not be perfect. Like, that's not what it was created for. But you could use it for other things. But its purpose is not fulfilled. What good is having, uh, what, what, what good is having an iPhone is the only, if the only thing that you use it for is text messaging? Well, that's the only reason I got it for. The only reason I got this Samsung is just to take pictures. That's it. You know, phone calls. Matter of fact, I don't even got no service. <laughs> I just use it for pictures. Like, what, 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 what good is it if you're not using all the tools that it comes with? If it's not fulfilling its purpose. So he says, Peter, launch out. Somebody say, launch out. Launch out. Somebody say, launch out. Launch out. It says, um, <clears throat> Simon Peter answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. It says, nevertheless, just like um, Peter, Peter was saying, <clears throat> Jesus, I don't know how many of y'all are in this situation. It might not be everybody, but I know it might be somebody. Um, Jesus, I, I hear what you're asking me to do. Um, and I'll be honest with you, it's not too much. It's not too big a ask what you're asking of me right now. Um, and I do believe that I'm absolutely capable of doing it. But if I'm being honest with you, Jesus, <clears throat> I'm tired. I am exhausted. Jesus, I am worn out. And what you are asking me to do right now, what you're requesting of me to do right now, what you are requiring of me in this moment, had you asked me to do that last night, we might have been all right because I already had the nets out, hadn't cleaned them yet. Like we were already good. I was already in the mode of work. Had you caught me in a season where I was pushing, where I was driving it home, then I would have been like, okay, all right, God, let's do it. I already got momentum, let's do it. But you caught me in a season where I ain't feel like doing it. You caught me in a season where I was already depleted. You caught me in a season where I had already washed my nets, and now you're asking me to get them dirty again. Listen, um, so, so for me, um, once, once, uh, once I hop in the shower and I get out, we ain't going outside to play with the kids. It just ain't happening. They play rough. They, they, they have play clothes because they tear their shoes and clothes up. So after I take a shower, I've already made up my mind that, all right, we're not going outside to play. Whatever we do, we about to have fun right inside this room, right inside this house. We ain't going out nowhere. 
some of y'all that probably don't hit because you just gonna go out and get dirty and then you're just gonna take another shower. Or some of y'all, I don't know what your hygiene situation look like. Let's let's come up, y'all. Let's come up. <laughs> let's come up. Um, but 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 all right, how about this? This might work. Um, so for me, um, once I brush my teeth at night, I ain't going back in the refrigerator. And matter of fact, sometimes it's a way of holding myself accountable. So I'll brush my teeth early in the evening. That way I'm like, don't touch that ice cream. Don't touch that, them cookies. Don't go for them snacks. Just leave it alone. You already brushed your teeth. We already good. Because, you know, if you eat it, you got to go brush your teeth again, right? I've already brushed my teeth. So I'm like, we done. It's similar to how Peter feels about washing his net. A fisherman, once he washes his net, we're done. It's over. We're not going out for the rest of the day. So it, it's, it's, it's not just happenstance that he includes this minor, what we think is a minor detail that he says, and they're washing their nets. What Peter is saying, I'm done. I'm exhausted. I'm fed up. The season of me getting fish is over. I'll come back in a little bit. But right now, you just caught me in a weird space where I don't feel like I have the energy. I don't feel like I have what it takes to fulfill what you're asking me to do. But then there's a word, a transitional word, that changes the entire situation. Somebody say, nevertheless. 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 Um, this word, nevertheless, not only does it mean but, um, but it also means that you are in opposition to whatever was previously asked. I told y'all, your, your but, it doesn't just cancel out everything in front of it, but your but also establishes motive. He says, I've been toiling all night. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I've already washed my nets. Nevertheless, I am in opposition, God, to what you are asking me to do. However, because you said it, I believe your word more than I believe my doubt. I believe your word more than I believe that I will fail. I believe your word more than I believe that I will fall on my face. I believe your word. Man, listen, I say this all the time, that I love God, that my love for God exceeds my fear of man. My love for God exceeds my fear of man. My love for God exceeds my fear of failure. So I'm not afraid to fail. I'm not afraid to fall on my face. I'm not afraid to have people talk about me because that's how much I love God. The, for the love of God, that could be a whole message by itself. I might have to use that one. For the love of God, it'll have you doing some crazy things. I ain't just talking about embarrassing things. I ain't talking about things that'll have you looking foolish, even though sometimes being obedient to God will have you looking naturally foolish sometimes because the foolish things confound the wise, right? But sometimes he'll ask of you to do what seems like a very hard thing, but you don't even realize that the thing that he's asking you to do is actually setting you up for the purpose that he had for you all along. So after they get off the boat and he comes back to him, he says, Peter, I want to make you a fisher of men. I want to use what you've been doing all along, but now transition it into something that I can use for my glory. Something that you thought was just, oh man, you know, this is just something I do well. No, I want you to do it well to bring people into the kingdom. I don't want you to just do it for money, but man, let me use this to bring people into the kingdom. I, you, if you have a job, if you have a profess, profession, if you have a service for people, then sometimes you need to look at somebody who maybe don't got the money to pay for it and say, man, you know what? I'm going to just be a blessing to you for this one. I ain't going to ask you for a thing, right? Th th these are ways that we can take what we've been gifted to do and instead of monetizing it all the time, taking it and saying, you know what? I'm going to use this to be a fisher for men. I'm going to use this to win people over to Christ. Let me take my gift. Let me take my ability. Let me take my talent and let me sow it. Let me be a blessing to somebody to open up the door for maybe just a conversation about Christ. Do you know, many of you know that I have a media company. Do you know how many people that the media company has set me up with to be able to introduce Christ? Do you know how many people with just a camera, with just a camera, 
Somebody wants video, production, um, um, pictures, um, marketing, whatever it is. It is just a platform to get you into the door. And once you get into the door, they ask, normally nine times out of ten, they ask, yeah, so uh, outside of this, what do, you, what, what do you do? Glad you asked. Um, I'm actually a pastor. You a pastor? Why don't you correct me? I've been cussing this whole time. <laughs> you a pastor? Oh, boy. Um, majority of them say this. Oh, really? Where's the church? What's the name of it? They want to know more because they're, they're intrigued. How is it that you're a pastor, but you still got a business, but you still got a company? How is it? What, what, uh, many of you would be amazed how God can use your profession to win people over to Christ. I know that messed some of y'all up because you thought it was just to make money. You thought you were just, and that's why you complain sometimes when you go to your job because you see it as just a job, right? You can see Peter complaining about not catching any fish because he just sees it as an occupation. But you don't complain about an occupation if you see it as a vocation. You don't complain about your profession when you see it as purpose. You don't complain about your career when you see it as your calling. Because your mind is made up that even if I don't get the pay that I desire, guess what? I'm getting paid in the spirit because I'm winning people over to Christ. And you're complaining about, why, why ain't nobody else on this job love Christ? Why am, I, am I the, why am I the only light? Well, how else is light going to shine unless it's in darkness? Maybe that's why you're there. Maybe you're the only person that's keeping that business afloat. Maybe if you decide to quit, maybe the whole thing will come crashing down. He says, Peter, I want to make you a fisher for men. There's something I want to do in you that's still going to pull in people the way you did with fish. Oh, my God, this is the amazing thing. Um, <clears throat> this is the awesome thing about what Jesus tells them. He says, launch out into the deep, cast out your nets. This is the awesome thing about it. Um, one of the awesome things about it. Um, many of us make excuses about, oh, well, I don't look the part. I, 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 don't, I don't feel like I have what it, what, it, what it takes. I feel like I don't have all the right materials. It's hard for me to get people's attention. It's hard for me to uh, keep people's attention. I'm not the best speaker. I'm not the best singer. I'm not the best. I'm not the best. I'm not the best. Here's the thing about what he tells them. He says, cast out your net. Notice, with a net, you don't need bait. Think about it. Think about it. Think about it. He didn't ask you. You would think, he says, hey, I want to make you a fisher of men. And guess what? You know what fish like? Fish like worms. Fish like other fish. You know what type of bait fish like. And so in the same way, I want to use you to bait men to Christ. The word of God don't need bait. Lakir said it best. He said the word of God don't need hot sauce. <laughs> it doesn't. The word of God is bait all by itself. The word of God is the food. The word of God is the meat. And so you don't have to worry about, okay, well, I have to make this appealing. And there is nothing, there is absolutely nothing wrong with marketing. There is absolutely nothing uh, wrong with, um, um, what's the big word that I wanted to use? I guess God don't want me to sound smart this morning. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with a big, with, with, with a big show and, and to make things very uh, presentable, right? There's nothing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, I think that's something that the body of Christ lacks a little bit. Sometimes their, their attention needs to be grabbed right at the front, at least to bring them in close enough to where we can minister to them. But there are also many times, similar to Peter, where he tells him, hey, I want you to be the church. I want you to be the rock that I build this church on. And what I'm building the church on, the foundation, hear what I'm saying, the foundation of the church will not be built on lights, cameras, fog machines, big presentations, and marketing. The foundation of the church will be built on the gospel, will be built on the word. Yeah, those things reel people in, but it will be built on the word. So what he tells Peter is cast out your net, right? So that when you cast it out, you don't need bait. You don't have to try to make this pretty. You don't have to try to make this so convincing. Interesting to me as well um, that later on as Paul comes onto the scene, they were two of the main apostles that were preaching the gospel everywhere. So Paul, he was very learned. 
right? He was one of the people who knew all of the laws, who knew all of the politics, who could talk to all of the kings and queens in high places. Where Peter, he was more so the person like, man, all I got is street smarts. That's all I know how to do. Which is interesting because you would think that Jesus would send Peter to the street and you would send Paul into the offices. But it's almost like God switched it up. Paul said, uh, how about this? I go to the Gentiles and you go to the Jews. I'll go to the Gentiles who are in the street, right? And you go to the Jews who are in the offices, who are in the high rise which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, except that God uses the foolish things that confound the wise. So when Paul comes to the people in the street, they're looking at him like, what can you tell us? You ain't used to this. And Paul is like, guess what? I got the cross. And the cross will preach all by itself. That's, 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 that's why he said, um, 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 bring it back to me, Holy Spirit. Um, uh, that, that the cross should not be empty of its power, right? Uh, somebody remind me of that verse. Ms. Marjorie, can you look it up real quick? Um, that Paul ended up going out to the Gentiles because I'm sure that God already knew these are our people who are going to look at you and they're going to say, man, you know what? You don't got nothing. But then when you start to declare the word, they'll realize that you have power more than what they even thought was possible. That when he sends Peter to the Jews, that they're looking at him like you're unlearned. But that was the thing that drew them in. They said, these are unlearned men. They've not even been to school. They don't even have an education. So how is it that they're able to properly break down the word of God and the law in this way if they are unlearned? It's amazing what happens when you allow God to use you, to put you on like a glove, to be able to speak to people who you thought you would never be able to minister to, to be able to reach people who thought that they were unreachable, to be able to go into places that you thought that you were not qualified to go into. But then when you begin to declare the gospel, when you begin to declare the word of God, then those people, it draws them in. It pulls people in because they are drawn to the word. They are drawn to the word. They are drawn to the gospel. They are drawn to Christ. Not once did God ever set it up for us to be the light. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We are not light. The only light that we have is God shining through us. <clears throat> In order for God to shine through us, we have to be open. We have to be yielded. We have to allow his light to shine through us. So when he tells them to cast out your net, even though Peter put up a little fight, he still said, you know what? Nevertheless, at your word. Because I'm sure Peter realized something that's going to help us. I'll say this last thing and then we'll get ready to finish. I'm sure, like, sure Peter realized something that we're still coming to grips with. Um, he says, nevertheless, at your word. I ain't going to be able to finish this, so I'll finish on this note. He says, nevertheless, at your word. Because Peter realizes, if I can be obedient to your word, everything else, all of creation also has to line up to your <laughs> word. So even though this don't make sense, everything that I'm believing will happen after I do it has to happen after I do it. Not just because I did it, but because of your word. He gave him an instruction. And so with our obedience to his instruction, I ain't talking about you just going out and casting that nets out everywhere you want to just because I want to. I'm talking about at his word. What has God told you to do? Even if it seems like a ridiculous thing that you have never done before, even if it's an undertaking that is scary and that blows your mind, even if it's something that you did not go to school for. I don't have training in this. I ain't never done this before. But did he tell you to do it? Do you have his word? Because if he gave you his word, then that will be the thing to sustain you, that will be the thing that creation hearkens to. That will be the thing that keeps you in those moments when it doesn't look like it's coming 
to pass. He says, Peter, in verse 10, he says, do not be afraid. You already know, I don't even have time to go there. Whenever it says, do not be afraid or fear not, I don't have time to go there this morning. But he says, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. The reason that this is probably scary to Peter, because he's like, man, I know what to do with fish. I don't know what to do with men, though. I know how to catch fish. I don't know how to catch men. I know how to feed fish. I don't know how to feed men. I know how to manage. I know how to manage my fishing rod. I know how to clean my nets. I don't know how to manage men. I don't know how to clean Men, God, you are asking me something to do that seems to be outside of my profession, outside of my working knowledge and understanding. That's why he says, fear not. Don't be afraid, because what I'm asking you to do might be something you have never done before, but it's because you've not been walking fully in purpose until now. Somebody say, launch out into the deep. Everybody stand to your feet. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. <sighs> Father, I thank you that there are some things coming down the pipeline that we may have to do afraid. That we might have to do it scared. That we may have to do it in spite of our doubts, in spite of our fears. Um, in spite of our, if it's a lack of resource, funding, support, knowledge. Father, I thank you that everything that you have created us to be, that it won't just happen by osmosis or happenstance, but I thank you that you are very intentional with every opposition, with every storm, with every season, that you are very intentional, intentional about pushing us into our purpose. Father, I pray that you would make us sensitive to what you are doing in this season so that we'll not fight your hand, so that we won't fight your will, so that we won't fight your purpose. Hallelujah. Make us sensitive to your direction. Make us sensitive to your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. We want to live on purpose. We're not okay with just being okay. We're not just okay with coasting. We're not okay with comfortable. We're not okay with complacency. We are tired of living a life that is unfulfilled. Father, but today we want to be filled. We want to be fulfilled. We want to live a life of purpose. We want to walk in calling. We don't want any more days to be wasted. Thank you, Lord. We give you permission. We are willing to push out a little. And ultimately, Father, we are giving you our permission to launch out, to launch us out into the deep. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for speaking to us today. Declaring your word over us. Thank you, God. I want to pray specifically this morning. If there's anybody who's similar to Peter and says, but God, I've been toiling all night. I'm tired. Worn out. I'm depleted of my energy. <clears throat> my strength. He's leaking. Ah. 
I don't just want to pray for your energy and your strength, but I believe that your energy and your strength will come from your nevertheless. If that's you this morning, I want to pray for you. If you want to give God your nevertheless, if that's you this morning, you say, Pastor, I'm tired, I'm worn out, I'm depleted. What he's asking me to do is not too much, but it feels like it's too much because I'm just in a space right now where I just don't feel like I have to give what he's requiring of me to offer. I want to pray for you this morning. I would ask that you just step up to the front. I want to pray for you this morning. Hallelujah. If you've been toiling. Whew. Now, I ain't talking about just pushing. Hallelujah, I receive it. I'm not talking about just pushing, but I'm talking about I feel like I've been toiling. I feel like the energy I have been putting out has not been replenished. I feel like it's been going out, but it's not been coming back in. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray for you this morning. That as a result of your nevertheless, that you would experience a refreshing. I'm already praying just in case you hadn't caught it. That you would experience... In, that you would experience revitalization as a result of your nevertheless. I dare somebody to say it even out of your own mouth, nevertheless, 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 nevertheless. And what you're saying to God is, in spite of how I feel, I still receive your will for my life. Irregardless of how I feel, I still accept and embrace the call of God on my life, regardless of how I feel. Whew. Father, I still want to live on purpose. Father, I, get, I thank you this morning that you are giving strength to the weary. Hallelujah. Father, that you are refreshing that you, are being ref that you are bringing refreshing, even in a dry land. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I see that as a result of your nevertheless, that you are gaining momentum in the Spirit. That one of the reasons why your strength has been depleted has been because you're not seeing the fruit of your labor. Because you've not been experiencing, um, that you've not been experiencing the productivity of your push. Yep, I see it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. But this morning, as a result of you just saying, just simply saying, nevertheless, at your word, nevertheless, at your word, nevertheless, at your word, I will. I see Holy Spirit refreshing you in a way that you've not been refreshed in years. I, I see you in a place where, where, where he is restoring your youth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I see it springing forth. Not just coming, but springing forth. I see new energy. I see new strength. I see new glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that with every step of obedience, I believe the Spirit of the Lord says that with every step of obedience, you'll receive fresh wind. Fresh wind. Somebody say fresh wind. Fresh wind. That with every step of obedience, you'll experience a fresh wind. That with every step of obedience, that you'll be building momentum. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for refreshing happening in this place this morning. 
the name of Jesus we pray, amen. Glory to God. You may return to your seats. Well, good morning, Flo fam. We hope you enjoyed the service today. And in case you missed any part of it, that's all right. You can go on over to our YouTube channel where all of our messages are saved. And while you're over there, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so that you can get a notification anytime we load a message. If this message has been a blessing to you today or any day, we ask that you consider giving a monetary donation online via our website or our cash app. For more information about upcoming events and what we have going on at the church, you can go over to our Facebook page, our Instagram page, any social media site, and you can get caught up there with what's going on with the ministry. If you've enjoyed yourself today, I ask that you share this with someone else you know. Share this with a friend. Invite a friend to church. We're in the building now. You can stream online. However, we ask that you just join us. And lastly, Flow Fam, we thank you for tuning in to flowing life where we love God, love people, and live life.